So the question, there are two questions that I get asked the most. And the first one is, Marie, do I have the potential to become a successful model? And here's my answer, whether it be a model, an actor, or anything within the entertainment business. The agencies decide if they're going to represent you. The clients decide if they're going to book you. But you have to decide if you're up for the challenging journey as an entrepreneur because you're going to be self-employed. So the answer, as I was already saying, to expound a little more, is your decision to pursue a career in modeling or entertainment and, the, and your commitment is going to determine your success. It is 100% up to you. Each state has different guidelines. For example, in the state of Illinois, in order for you to become a licensed agent, you have to do two things. You have to have a business license and you have to be licensed through the Department of Labor. In order for us to become agents through the Department of Labor, the only criteria is a few things. One, not have been a convicted felon. Two, be able to read a pamphlet, go downtown to the Department of Labor, spend $50 to take the test that the Department of Labor gives you on rules and regulations of employment agency acts that have nothing to do with what we do for a business. But if you answer all the questions properly, you're now a licensed agent. That is it. There is no criteria from anybody to make sure that you know what you're doing. Okay, the second question, Marie, how do I drastically improve my opportunities to be represented and booked? You need to be the solution in solving their individual needs, meaning the agents and the clients. You have to be the one that solves their casting needs, really. And we'll get more into that in a minute. And then B, utilize your social media strategically and tactically. Those two components will make a huge difference in how much money you make and how well your career evolves. So question, do you understand the importance of social media and are you committed to using the free tool to leverage yourself into a global brand? The answers need to be yes and yes. At the end of the day, it's free. You have the ultimate control to take care of it and to strategize and to establish your brand. You truly need to know what value do you bring to potential agencies and clients. Like, what are you contributing inside the studio? What are you contributing with the agency? But knowing the answers is the basis to your success. So how do you leverage yourself? What makes you interesting from all the other models, from all the other actors that clients can book and agencies can represent? You have to figure that out. So branding, you and your lifestyle. What separates Marie P. Anderson from all the other agents there are very few agents around the world that talk about model advocacy, civil rights, human rights, self-defense, trying to make sure that you guys understand that there are hostile work environments and that there is sexual impropriety, but here's what we can do in order to try to hopefully prevent that. So that is my brand. I'm all about advocating for you all as models. So that's what separates me from other agents. So branding is one of the most important aspects of any business. We'll get into it more, but consumers essentially, the agencies and the clients shop with brands, models and entertainers that they trust and recognize and like. So it's very important that you understand you have to be the solution to their casting issue, be casting through the agency or casting through a client, because then they understand that you're gonna be show up on time and you're gonna bring your A game and you're gonna bring whatever brings the client asked you to bring and you're gonna bring a great attitude and you're gonna be fun to work around. We talk about models, clients talk about models. So it's important you understand that your professionalism makes the difference in how much you're going to evolve in your career. So your brand identity should convey your brand story why it exists, and what you promise your customers. You're not just selling a service, you're selling a professional lifestyle, like how professional or unprofessional you are by how you behave and how you post on your social media conveys what, who you are and what your lifestyle is. Branding, you, your lifestyle. Branding isn't formed overnight. You all, this takes a long time. It took me decades to really learn how to articulate my specific brand as a public speaker and as an agent 
to me, model advocacy is my primary concern in keeping you guys safe. That, that didn't happen overnight, the theory did, but I didn't know how to help you guys. And now with the internet and social media, it makes it so much more simpler. Your brand is basically the theme of your business. So it should be well thought out. Show potential customers what sets you apart from the others and makes you their ideal business partner, right? So just like me with any of the models that I manage, we're business partners together. When I am inside of an agency or you're represented by an agency, you're signing a contract, that's a business partnership. And then what is the entire customer experience that you provide? Like if you are late and you're cranky and you sit around shaming other models and you're making fun of some model's outfit or whatever, I'm just making stuff up. But uh, so if you're crabby, people don't wanna be around you and on set. So that's establishing your reputation. So you always wanna keep uh, high energy and a great attitude when you're around clients. Are you the solution to their challenges by understanding your responsibilities as a professional? Or are you the problem? the distraction that they need to address. You never want to be that problem. Do you understand your brand and how it aligns with your aspirational career brands? That's important for you to know. Do you move in a way that sells their fashion or product? So for those of you that don't know the difference between a fashion model and a lifestyle model, fashion models sell fashion and beauty, and then the lifestyle models sell anything and everything that isn't fashion. So do you bring a great deal of creative collaboration to, into each studio? So you need to figure out what creativity you can bring as a collaborator when you go into the studios. Are you trustworthy? Do clients have to worry about you trying to steal somebody's cell phone or stealing some, like you really have to be trustworthy. Are you punctual? So important. If you can get in the habit of showing up 15 minutes ahead of time. This is ideal. It's a good habit for you to start that way, plan for traffic and you have to plan for parking and you've got to plan for that elevator that might be slow. So it's always ideal for you to show up a few minutes early. Are you fun to have around, especially if you've got a full day booking? So clients want to have you around for that amount of time. They want to make sure that you're happy and you're fun and that you're uh, sharing good energy while you're there. Do you listen to the clients while you're on set and follow their directions? That's really important too. Listening, hearing what they have to say and paying attention and then giving them what they're asking for. Do you treat your career like a professional business? Yes, modeling is very glamorous and it's lots of fun, but you all have to understand you are freelance, self-employed contractors, which means you're not employed by anybody specifically full-time you are essentially hired per day or per hour or per week, whatever the booking is, and then it's done. So here are core values. I'm gonna encourage you guys to figure out what your core values are, whether it's three to four words. But as you can see on the screen, my personal core values are integrity, faith, and courage. And I think they're self-explanatory. And then Boss Babe Models, which is my company, also has its core core values, which is purpose, dignity, empathy, and courage. Similar, but are different. In social media, in the world of entertainment, the primary platform, modeling, acting, whatever, dancing, singing, it, Instagram. Okay, the other question that I get asked less than the other two is, Marie, how do I get more followers? And my answer is by following my advice. So keep your safety in mind, please, you guys. Please keep your safety in mind. Use your common sense. Do not put yourself in the harm's way. Don't share any information that could put you or your friends or your family into a dangerous situation. And parents, please do participate in your children's social media activity. Whether they're a four-year-old or a 14-year-old or an 18-year-old, I strongly encourage parents to participate so that they can understand that this is not an easy endeavor. And a lot of times parents can help with the business strategy with the entertainer's career. So I highly encourage you to make it more of a team effort. Who has written an informative, thorough bio on Instagram? So your bio on Instagram is critical. So how many links do you have in your bio that shows your skills or talent? So how many of you have a link in your bio? Who's posting daily on Instagram? I mean, like a daily post. Who's posting in the stories? And are you using hashtags? So who's created their highlights? 
a lot of people haven't spent the time doing that. Who, who is utilizing Instagram TV? Have you established your voice or message within your individual brand? As I said, you know, me being a model advocate, that's my voice. What is your voice? Like that, what is your platform? If so, if let's say you were going to be interviewed by Entertainment Tonight, what else are you going to talk about? Are you a person of substance? Do you think about other things in the world that are important other than what you're going to wear that day or your hairstyle? So it's important you have to create a really good solid foundation in establishing your voice. Also what's important is that you have your location in your bio and that little emoji there tends to be the emoji that clients and agencies look for quickly in your Instagram to figure out your location. And literally the location would be like Chicago. I wouldn't be putting my street address in there. They, have, they need to understand what region you're in because then they can get a better sense of, are you gonna be able to come in that day for a casting? Are you gonna be able to come in that day? for uh, an interview at the agency. Another thing I just thought of that I find incredibly annoying is when people have private accounts, to me that comes across a little suspect because I don't know who's hiding behind that profile. So if, if I don't know that person and they have a private account, I won't follow them. This is a business and you need to have full transparency, full disclosure. I understand that if you're a child, you know, if you're a child or your parent monitoring, yes, I understand uh, younger people should be more protected, bravo. But at the end of the day, as soon as you start becoming a teenager, you need to have a business profile where people can understand your bio, like who you are in your bio, your location, the link to your talents or the link to your modeling agency. So please do not have private accounts because it is not a business account if it's private. Okay, attitude on social media. I love this guy, listen to this. Call themselves social media influencers, but you're influencing people to do what? Is it to, to reach a level of beauty that is not attainable naturally? Is it to have people lust after cars or material objects that will never bring somebody true happiness? Is this what it means to be an influencer? You know, when you get pulled over, you're drunk. They say you're under the influence. A lot of people are intoxicated by what these influencers put out there. When you get sick, what do they say? You've come down with influenza. A lot of people are ill because of what these influencers put out there. So I just have one question for every influencer, because we're all influencers. And that question is, when people come to your page, do they walk away better or worse? I love that. He could not have said that any better because I think that that's so important. What is your reputation? I hope you're a kind person that's very professional. Do they walk away better or worse? because either we're gonna be a part of the problem in uh, mental health being compromised or we're gonna be part of the solution. So where do you fit into the industry? You need to be an entertainer, a performing artist. So as a model, acting, dancing, singing, martial arts, like the more you can do, again, you're going to become more of an enticing person to be represented and booked. So you need to communicate your talents and skills on your Instagram. This is all part of marketing yourself globally. So as a model, you're running a business, right? Your Instagram business account, it needs to be a business account. If you're thinking when you post on Instagram that you're there trying to entertain your family and friends, you're not. Have a private page, make it just for personal use. Because if you're gonna be a professional to be competitive, to make money, to become a global brand, then you need to have a professional page on Instagram, meaning a professional account. And it is not used to entertain your family and your friends. It's there to establish yourself, establish your voice, get agencies to represent you and clients to book you. So post with strategic intention to enhance the opportunities to get agencies to represent you and clients to book you. Like really plan for this, really understand like what you're gonna be posting on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It can be fun if you understand that, you know, you're the show. So let's see about all the wonderful things that we can do on your behalf to make you into a global brand. So all this kind of strategy should be part of your creativity and your intelligence and common sense. 
my brand, Marie P. Anderson, as you can see, is consistent. Marie P. Anderson, 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 Chicago. Everything needs to be consistent. You can't have a hodgepodge of your Instagram is one name, your Facebook is another, your Twitter is another, your LinkedIn is another. Like your brand has got to be consistent. What's on your acting resume, what's on your headshot, what's on the agency's website, your social media, everything has got to be the same. So what is my digital voice, my reputation? <laughs> so coaching boss babes how to become professional models while still maintaining their dignity, health, and self-respect. So just right there, that one sentence, coaching boss babes how to become professional models, blah, 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 that is in my bio. So if anybody goes to my bio, boom, they know exactly what I'm all about. Those who stand for nothing fall for anything. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? So what is important to you? This is critical in establishing your voice or your reputation on your social media. So agencies and clients are considering if your brand is in alignment with their brand. So you have to understand when you're submitting your photos, they better be appropriate, family-friendly type of images. Okay, so what is your brand? You guys understand there is no gray area. Either you're professional, and you're family friendly or you're not. You make the decision. Okay, and the other thing is they can't afford to be embarrassed by your behavior if they decide to represent you or book you, right? There are a lot of e-commerce clients. When I was inside the agency business, the e-commerce clients like Kohl's would have us agents sign a contract verifying that we would not send them any models that would compromise their family friendly brand and that we as agents had not done anything inappropriate. So we have to be family friendly brands, right? This is a ripple effect. So whatever you're posting, whoever you're associating with, whatever you're reposting is an extension of us in an agency or in a management position or in a client position. So be very, very careful in how you're strategizing to make sure that you're on point with your brand. So your digital footprint, reputation is forever. I'm sure you've heard that lecture before, but what is your voice on social media? Pause and think before you post. Are you being kind? Are you part of the solution to stop bullying online? So is that post consistent with my branding? I have to constantly ask myself that. So agencies and clients want to know your followers and engagement. What happens most often now when you physically go into a casting, a lot of times there'll be a sign-in sheet and there'll be three lines. You fill in your name, they'll ask for your Instagram name, and then they'll also ask for your followers, how many followers do you have on your Instagram. It all becomes part of their process and making the decision if they're going to work with you in any way. They want to know what can you do for them? That is the solution. Are you the solution? What can you do for them? Make sure you give them plenty of content, uh, content to devour. Oh my gosh. Do not use Snapchat or any other fantasy filters. <laughs> I am so tired of you guys sending me pictures or posting on your social media with Snapchat filters. If we can't see your face, why are you covering it up? Then if we can't see you, we don't want to book you. So you're not the solution. You're not living in reality if you're putting all that crap all over your face. Does that look like somebody that understands what we need in a model? No, we can't see her face, but look at this. Look how pretty she is. Stop covering up your faces. So Marie, what should I post? Yes, this is always being asked of me. Post happy images and video. Video, 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 and still images that represent your brand, like working out, at a booking, at a casting, visiting the agency, lunch with a friend, posting you at a dance class or an acting lesson, inspirational quotes, like if you follow my feed, I think I do inspirational quotes like every seven days, eight days, because I love to be inspiring. Aspirational photos, and then wholesome flattering selfies, but do not have your entire Instagram feed full of selfies. So take a behind the scenes of your bookings and casting, but always ask permission, like if you can tag somebody 
So you always want to be respectful of people's privacy. Always ask permission first. So shoot videos of you talking. We talked about that. Engaging with the camera, who's your audience. And as I said before, please never bully or shame anyone. So as I mentioned, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but if you want to find out more about that, just DM me. So thank you for investing your time and allowing me to help you and allowing me to teach you some industry insights.